Alright, welcome back. Let's come back and start talking about oligopolies now. Last section in chapter 9. And oligopolies, kind of like monopoly, except oligopoly instead of it. <clears throat> and of course, mono meaning one, oligo meaning multiple. Therefore, number of sellers, few. More than one, not a bunch like a monopolistic competition, but a, a handful at least, so five or six maybe. Is there product differentiation? Maybe, maybe not. Kind of depends on what type of oligopoly it is, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then the last characteristic is that it's difficult to enter and exit the market. Not impossible like monopoly, so there's no, there's no huge economies of scale that are forcing you to not be able to get in. There's no government mandate, and there's no you know, natural monopoly that's forcing you not to be in. It just costs a serious load of cash to get into one of these, firm, to get one of these markets, and you may or may not have the kind of cash to do it. Right? I mean, it's tough to raise that kind of capital. Well, one of the not real characteristics, but a trait of oligopolies is that they tend to practice mutual interdependence. Mm, sounds very fancy, right? Mutual interdependence. Really, all it means is that you know there's three or four other firms that are following everything that you do all the time. So anytime you make a decision about what to produce, what price to set, how to change production, how to advertise, you know that the other guy is going to adjust accordingly and that you change your plans based on their plans. So that every plan you make is based off of someone else already making a plan to some degree. Mutual interdependence. Everybody else is watching everybody else's back to see if there's an opening where they can stab them in the back, right? That's what businesses are trying to do. Now, when we have these types of characteristics defining a market, which there's a, pr a fairly few good number of these that are sitting out there. I mean, think of like the classic one that's going on right now is AT&T and Verizon. It's the whole blue map, red map, 3Gs, 4Gs, you know, 87 height type of thing. This is actually a non-price oligopoly right now. Anywhere in those advertisements, do they ever talk about how the cost is going to be different for one of them versus the other? Do they ever talk about trying to steal market share by lowering the price a ton lower than the other one? No. Nobody's trying to change the price. All they're trying to do is to prove that we're different. That's it. That's what a non-price determinate or a non-price driven oligopoly is one. An oligopoly is where everything is driven by image. Right? Whether or not 3G or 4G is really necessarily better than Verizon's 3G or 4G, how the heck would we know? There's no way to know. But we can pretend like we do, and we can pretend like it is, and that's a great way of trying to drive market share to one side instead of just using price. Huh? Now, other types of oligopolies are price leader oligopolies. Those are oligopolies where there's four or five firms, but there's one clear leader. Right? So right now, if you look at the, you know, at the, at the electronics industry, Best Buy is the electronic selling leader. They are the price leader. If you look at any of the small other local area firms that are selling electronics, they are always looking at what Best Buy is doing. And if Best Buy lowers the price of their computers, guess what you have to do? Lower the price of yours. If they lower the price of their flat screen 46 inch TVs, you have to lower the price of your flat screen 46 inch TVs. That's where you've got an oligopoly where one person is leading the show. They're driving all of the, all of the market share based on whatever price they set. And you have to deal with it when, when it comes to, to, to your chance to sell it when you're not that leader of the oligopoly. The last type of oligopoly, which is by far the most fun to analyze and probably the most scrutinized out there in the, in the actual industries, is cartels. And what a cartel is, is when you get an oligopoly that everybody bands together and converts itself into an evenly distributed monopoly. So if you get a, a bit of an analysis of an oligopoly, right, if you think about it, right, here's maybe how a, a monopoly looks. Here's how a monopolistic competition looks. Probably an oligopoly is somewhere in between. Right? There, this is their demand structure for each one of them. Right? Here, it's, it, it's not perfectly elastic, but it's certainly not inelastic. Here, you're skirting between elastic and inelastic. This is, these are your oligopolies. This is your monopolistic competition, and this is your straight monopoly. And so what these oligopolists want is they really want to have a pricing scheme that's more elastic. 
And so what they do is they all group together and they say, tell you what, if you produce this much and I produce this much and that person produces that much, we can all charge this higher price and we can all make more money. And it works. It works like a charm. If you think back into the 1970s in the U.S. when we had our first gas crunch, that was where the Middle East, the sellers of gasoline, or really oil, got together and said, we're all going to cut our production so that this is how much oil is going to hit the market. Based on this much production, we can get this kind of a price for our oil. And therefore, the price of gas skyrocketed up to, you know, from 99 cents up to almost a dollar and 75 cents. Imagine gas, a dollar 75 cents. Oh yeah, I mean, right now that'd be great. But back in the 70s, that was brutal. And what, what ended up happening? That's, this lasted for like three, four, five years, right? And then, well, then we started to have some more wars in the Middle Eastern zone. And what did those countries who were in this OPEC cartel, what did they need? To run a war. What do you need to run a war? What does the U.S. need to run its war? The narrow money. We needed cash. Well, what happens when you're in a cartel and you're all pretending to be a monopoly and you're all saying, I'm going to only produce this much, when all of a sudden you decide to change from saying, I was going to produce this much to, oops, I'm going to produce that much. And you double your, you know, maybe you raise your production by 20-25%. You cheat the rest of the cartel for a short time. Right? Because you're only going to be able to cheat them for a little while when you in increase your production. Because what are they going to do once they notice that you're increasing production? Yeah, they're going to do the same thing. Right? They're like, you can't take our profit share. We're going to cut in and increase our production and prices are going to even out a little bit. And they're going to approach more being a monopolistic competition instead of being an monopoly. So what ends up happening in a cartel is that they never last for long. And the reason why? They're run by human beings. The cheater in the oligopoly who's running a cartel is the person who will make the most profit. The price of the good won't be as high because they'll have produced too much, right? They'll have produced, instead of forcing their, the quantity to be somewhere here and getting a price here, they'll increase their quantity to, you know, to make the total quantity something like this, and the price of the good will fall. They'll still make a profit, a huge profit, because they're out there, you know, taking the, stealing all the, you know, the market from those people who didn't cheat. And eventually what ends up happening is that once those other, other people in the oligopoly see that they're cheating, the cartel breaks down, and the oligopoly, which may have been okay if it would have been one of these two types, basically turns into a glorified monopolistic competition. Better for all of us, because all of us buyers, because then the, the monopoly pricing goes away and we get back to something that's a little bit more reasonable in a monopolistic competition. Alright, so oligopoly's characteristics, types, and just realize that the, the end result of a cartel is that the cheater wins and then the cartel breaks up, shoots back into being either some form of oligopoly or more like a mutual uh, uh, monopolistic competition.